The two children were a boy and a girl. It was a Wednesday in the middle of winter, and they had decided to skip school. The boy told his parents he had come down with diabetes, a disease he'd learned about the day before. The girl told her parents that the principal had died. Neither set of parents had the time nor energy to investigate these claims any further. The boy and the girl were both in fifth grade at Branchburg Elementary School. They were the type of kids someone talks about around a bonfire 20 years later under the assumption that they must be dead by now. They each possessed a low hum of general misbehavior, with the occasional act of misbehavior so disruptive that an assembly would need to be called to address it. The boy once ripped off a teacher's wig. The girl was prone to luring deer inside the school. Their friendship was one of mutual respect and geographic convenience. They had decided to skip because they wondered what the world was like while they were at school. That morning, they met at a tree they both knew and set out wandering around their neighborhood on foot. They wandered for hours, talking about teachers they found bizarre. They stepped on ants, they threw a brick at an old mirror, they saw an old woman fire a pistol at a helium balloon that had gotten stuck in her tree. But mostly, they were bored. The world while they were at school seemed to mostly consist of still lawns and people considering whether or not they should honk their car horns at someone who did not immediately move when the light turned green. It lacked the sense of consequence their school day had. After all, whose wig is worth ripping off in the real world? Like most children who spend a day wandering around, they ended up at the park. The girl threw wood chips at a tree and the boy jumped on and off a bench. At some point, the boy suggested they go back to school. The girl agreed. She had an idea for mischief involving the fire extinguisher. But just as they were about to leave, they saw something that caught their eye. An adult man, all by himself, was climbing up the steps of the yellow slide. The most peculiar thing about this man, however, was that he was the girl's father. He was at the park all by himself, wearing a suit. The children hid behind a picnic table, but it was clear he had not noticed them. He stood at the top of the slide for a few seconds, and then launched himself inside. Almost instantly, he became stuck. The girl's father had clogged the slide. A few moments went by. The two children stared at the slide. It wiggled as the man tried to jar himself loose. Then the slide went still. Soon, the word help began to echo out of it. Help. These cries for help became more and more worried, help. the man's fear illuminating every letter of the word. Help. The children were the only other people in the park. Help. The girl asked aloud if they should do something, but she did not realize that the boy had run away. He had run across the parking lot and begun climbing the chain link fence that surrounded the baseball field. When the girl finally looked back, the boy had reached the top. He jumped and landed right on his back. He did not move. The girl looked back at the slide that contained the screams of her trapped father and then back at the unconscious boy at the bottom of the fence. She ran away in the opposite direction and returned to sixth period. That night, the girl's father got home late. He said there had been a lot of traffic and that he could really use a beer. Three days later, the boy returned to school in a wheelchair. He said he had gotten hurt fighting a robber. He claimed to have defeated the robber. He also claimed to have a glass eye, despite it being clear it was still his birth eye. The boy grew up to become a man who frequented bowling alleys. The girl grew up to win $35,000 in a lawsuit against Staples. They never hung out again.